Hey, what's up, y'all? Here at our youth area, getting ready for youth service. So just figured I would quickly hit you on the periscope and uh, go hard. That's right. What's up, Devin? Yeah, go hard. Go hard. Yeah, so getting ready for youth service tonight. But I uh, thought I'd hit you with the quick scope. And uh, hope you're having a great day today. Good evening. Go hard. What's up? Go hard. Hey, hey. Hey, Jackie from Bensonville. What's up? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, do me a favor and uh, invite some more people to join us before we get started. I'm walking through the back hallway on my way back to my office. So, yeah, I'll see you soon. That's right. I'll see you soon. Good evening. It's important. I mean, it can hinder different things from happening in your life. Now, think about this. You know, if you received the gift of salvation, it was the free gift, and you have been forgiven. That's what, what forgiveness, what, what salvation is. It's you being forgiven of your sins. And so, you know, Jesus, a lot of times, he'll talk about what forgiveness is, and that if we've been forgiven of our debts, then we're to forgive others. You know, even in the Lord's pr prayer, it says, forgive others of their debts, even as we forgive our debtors, uh, and you know, even as we have been forgiven. And so um, the third scope on forgiveness today. All right. Hey, I'm Gloria. I'm glad you're on your way to youth service. Well, maybe God is speaking to you then on forgiveness. And uh, forgiveness is important. And so as forgiveness is important to God, it should be important to us also. I don't know if you've ever really been through a situation where it's been hard to forgive, but, um, but it takes some courage. And sometimes you might not be able to do it right then. You may not have all the strength and stamina to do it right then, but you ask God to give you grace, give you strength to be able to forgive those who have harmed you, who have wronged you. I was really inspired by uh, Dr. Matthew Stevenson and his scope earlier today. He was talking about um, disappointment and, uh, and I thought it was so key. Give him a follow if you can. I thought it was so key because it talked about disappointment really stems a lot of times from unmet expectations from an individual. And, uh, and I really believe that unforgiveness, it comes from an offense. An offense usually comes from a person um, of unmet expectations. So you believe that that boy, boyfriend or girlfriend should have acted different. You should have, your friend should have behaved differently. Mom or dad let you down because your expectation of them was higher and they fell short of that expectation. Maybe you have a, another uh, sibling, brother, sister, I don't know whoever it might be, but because of those expectations that you had and then they fell short. Oh, I thought you would have been more trustworthy. Oh, I thought you would have told the truth, but you said you never leave me, but you said you cared about me. You loved me, but you said that you would help me with this thing. And now when I need help, where are you? Um, those unmet expectations, a lot of times, Hey, how you doing? A lot of expectations that we have when they're unmet, they can start to plant the seed of being offended. And then as we have the seed of being offended, then that's where unforgiveness tries to take root. And so uh, Jesus talked about this in the scripture. He said, it's impossible to say that offenses won't come. So we know that offenses will come, but we don't have to take it and make it our own, make it personal. If offenses come, you know, they might come, but we don't have to take offense. You know, um, a man made false accusations against me and caused me to be laid off my job. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's a great illustration. And hopefully your situation has turned around or is turning around for the good. Um, but that's a great situation where, uh, and I'm glad that you've forgiven him. That's a great, great example of being in a tough situation where you could harbor unforgiveness. And let me tell you, um, you don't forgive people just because they apologize or say sorry. Forgiveness is for you, not necessarily for them. And so forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness, true forgiveness, doesn't need to be prompted by an apology or an I'm sorry from somebody. True forgiveness is a decision that you make to release them from the wrong that they have done against you. And so I believe that forgiveness is done in three steps. Here we go. Three steps. I believe, as it says in 1 John 1, 9, that um, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I believe that the first step to uh, forgiveness, to forgiving someone else, is to repent, to repent and turn away from, because unforgiveness is not God. That's that God is love. And so that's not God. And so there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what? I messed up. I missed it. I, I shouldn't have held this thing. I should have carried this thing. I, I should have just laid it down. 
but I didn't. And so you got to, first of all, come to God just like you are and say, God, you know, I repent. I missed it. I messed up. But get, now give me the strength, forgive me of my sin, and give me the strength to be able to do this thing. And then the next step. So that's step one. The next step, and that takes you know, humility sometimes to come with that first step. But the next step is you got to make a decision to forgive. I am going to forgive this person, that person, this ex, that father, that stepmom. I'm going to forgive whoever it is that I have ought against. And you have to make your decision. And then you have to actually practice forgiveness. Now, I believe that when you do this forgiveness, I, I'm often, I, I'm a big believer in just saying it out loud. Sometimes you have the opportunity to forgive the person to their face. Um, sometimes you don't have that opportunity, but I'm a big believer in saying it out loud. Uh, Lord, I forgive that person. I forgive them of this thing that they did. You know, when we have our uh, youth conferences, we do a session specifically on God's love and forgiveness. And that is actually always, for several years now, it's always one of our most impactful sessions where we have dozens, even hundreds of kids who we've taken through uh, for what we call a forgiveness proxy. And we walk them through the steps of forgiveness. And as we walk them through the steps of forgiveness, they have to say it out loud. And we actually will stand in proxy for the other person. And we say, you know, just talk just like you were talking uh, to that person. Talk to us just like you were talking to that person. And it, it becomes such a real moment because even though I'm not that person that they're pretending I am, but even though that's true, <laughs> Uh, the steps of forgiveness are still real to them. It's not me that needs to be the real person. It's them that need to experience the real process. And so what happens is we take them through that process and it's amazing. I mean, people get healed, transformed, delivered. I mean, people let go of some heavy, heavy baggage. And year after year, all the kids I talk to, that is the number one thing that they love the most is they felt so free after choosing to forgive. And so um, so the second step is you got to choose to forgive. And so you say out loud, I forgive this person. And then you have to choose to forgive each and every day. Sometimes, you know, it might take, and my wife taught me this. It was a great, great lesson in this. She taught me that sometimes you might have to forgive someone over and over and over and over. Why? Because it talks about in Matthew where Peter asked, you know, Jesus, how many times should I forgive? And he said, well, should I do it seven times? And, and Jesus said, 70 times seven. And so Jesus even believed in forgiving over and over and over and over. And so what happens is if I have ought against my brother and I see them the next day and those same feelings, those same emotions rise up in me that make me angry, frustrated, whatever emotions I had that I was holding on to the situation with, when those emotions come, I actually have to, uh, I actually have to go ahead and forgive again and again. And again and again. And I say each and every time those negative feelings rise up, always conquer it with forgiveness every time. And so when those negative emotions rise up, you see that guy, you see that girl, you see that family member. You got to remember, hey, I forgive them and say it out loud with your mouth. I forgive them. Lord, I, I forgive this person. I forgive that person until that feeling no longer has hold upon you. And I believe that the end process of forgiveness, the third step, is always healing. Forgiveness is not complete unless you are going through and have gone through the inner healing. Inner healing is the last step and the last part of the process for true forgiveness. I don't believe that we're supposed to just forgive and just remain broken people. But I believe that we're supposed to lend ourselves unto the Lord, let him continue to deal with us and work on our heart and help us uh, heal those hurts and, and heal those wounds that we have in our heart. And so as he helps us heal those wounds, then we can truly, truly forgive and we can truly walk in love and we can truly not have any record of wrong done to us, as it says in First Corinthians chapter 13. That's what love is. Keeps no record of wrong done to it. And so I encourage you. If you have ought against somebody, forgive them. If you're going through a situation with somebody, they've offended you, forgive them. Don't hold on to it. Holding on to it is like drinking poison and expecting it to hurt somebody else. It just doesn't work like that. One person said this, forgiveness is like um, setting a prisoner free and then finding out that you are the prisoner. And because forgiveness tries to enslave you, forgiveness try, or unforgiveness, excuse me, tries to en un enslave you. It tries to hold you. It tries to keep you. It tries to um, bind you. 
and it feels like bondage. And so, you know, inner healing is a crucial part. First of all, what do you do? You get, you go before God, humble, and you repent. Second, what you do is you make a decision, hey, I'm going to forgive. And you forgive each and every time you get those emotions that try to stir up, that make you mad or angry all over again. Forgive again and forgive again and forgive again. Even if they didn't physically or, or verbally do anything new to you, but you see them, you, something happens, something stirs up inside of you, makes you think about it, forgive again. And then you got to go ahead and enter into that inner healing. Offenses like holding a burning coal burns the one carrying it. That's right. That's right. And so I want to encourage you guys, forgiveness. Um, you know, uh, Lecrae says this in one of his lyrics. He says, you can forgive much when you know that you've been forgiven. And I really believe that. I believe that, you know, as, as Jesus has forgiven me, um, man, I can, I, the least I can do is forgive someone of that little offense that they did to me. Um, and so no matter how big or how small, Jesus didn't put conditions on forgiving. He didn't say, if they did this huge thing to you, then you can't forgive. And you know, you're okay. You're exempt. You don't have to forgive. No, he said, no matter what they do, you got to forgive them. No matter what the offense is, you got to forgive. And so my encouragement to you today, forgive those who you may have offense towards, who you may have unforgiveness towards. And so, um, and so, yeah, that's right. That's, that's good right there. Amen. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you were encouraged by these couple of moments. Share this with somebody else. It's very important that we forgive and, uh, and that we love others because that's how Jesus wants us to be. And that's how he did us. You know, he doesn't hold our offenses against us, but, uh, but he forgives us over and over and over and over. He's always faithful and willing and just to forgive us of our sins. And so we have to forgive others that have sinned against us. So I encourage you, share this with somebody else. I believe that they'll be encouraged to, uh, to make the step of courageous forgiveness and, uh, and they'll be free through it because forgiveness makes you better.